Peter Lee Lee was Anthony Van Dyck's natural successor. He was appointed portrait painter to Charles I and his remarkable talent and personality ensured that his career was not interrupted when Charles I was executed, going on to serve both Oliver Cromwell and Charles II. By 1654, Lely was described as the best artist in England. Lely was especially known for his grand manner portraits of society beauties that led Samuel Pepys to rhyme, Lely on animated canvas stole, the sleepy eye that spoke the melting soul. Our portrait of Elizabeth Palmer, mother of Sir Thomas Roth, has a given date of 1650 to 1655, despite a later hand inscribing it as 1670. The technique certainly appears more in keeping with Lely's later work, and has been queried if Elizabeth Palmer could be pregnant in this painting. Information I have found estimates Elizabeth's year of death as 1674, the same year in which her son Sir Thomas Roth is believed to have been born, raising the distinct possibility that Elizabeth Palmer may have died in childbirth. Elizabeth Palmer's granddaughter Cecily Roth is particularly important to our collection at Killerton. It is through her marriage to Hugh Ackland, who became the sixth baronet in 1721, that many of the portraits came into the Ackland collection. At the start of the 1660s, Lely achieved portraits in which he successfully combined the elegance of Van Dyck with a greater sense of volume. Our portrait of Anne Denham, painted in 1662, at the height of Lely's powers, marks the year of Anne Denham's marriage to William Morley and demonstrates the wealth and status of these two families. Anne Denham's father was the celebrated poet John Denham, who was wealthy enough to lend Charles II money while he was in exile while William Morley, heir to the Hanneker estate near Chichester, was the grandson of Sir Robert Heath, who served as Attorney General to Charles I. Anne Denham and William Morley had a daughter, Mary, who married James Stanley, the 10th Earl of Derby. This was said to be an unhappy marriage. Their only child died in infancy, and when Mary died in 1752, her fortune was inherited by her nearest living male relative, Sir Thomas Dyke Ackland, the seventh baronet of Colum John. Our final painting of Hugh V is inscribed by a later hand as being painted in 1672. However, Lady Anne Ackland claimed it was painted in 1677 after Sir Hugh had paid Charles II a fee of £1,095 for new letters patent to confirm the baronetcy. Sir Hugh's portrait is more stylized and classically inspired with strips of fabric hanging from his shoulders and his right arm resting easily on a Doric column. Sir Hugh is every inch of a gentleman, and if you look closely you can see that Lely has left his PL monogram just above Hugh's right hand. Lely died at his easel in 1680. Although remembered as an intimidating figure, and despite his unparalleled use of studio assistance, Lely dominated English portraiture for three decades with his sense of volume and masterful assurance. Lely was the best that money could buy, and we have three very fine examples here in the dining room that give us a window into the lives of the sitters. A pregnancy, the baronetcy, and a fine marriage. <laughs>